Meraba, great to be with you. It's an honor to be here in Istanbul. And uh, my name is John. I'm the founder of 3DOS, and we're building the world's largest decentralized manufacturing network, starting with 3D printing. About 10 years ago, um, we started this journey. Previous to that, I worked at Dell as a just-in-time manufacturing. I love low-latency manufacturing, on-demand manufacturing. So we started with 3D printers, and we built the first operating system for 3D printing, and it's used by MIT, Harvard, Yale, Google, John Deere, BMW. And the idea was just to upload a design and connect directly with a machine and have it made in low latency. Now, before we go to the technology, I'll kind of talk about the problem that we have today. You know, um, oops, here we go. You know, supply chains are broken. You know, it used to be Hondas were just made in Japan, now they're made in Mexico, they're made in Turkey, and this has been accelerating before COVID. You know, there's a, there's a big need to onshore local manufacturing. There's all this capacity. And so we start looking at, like, how do we do this with the least amount of human, humans, right? And we start looking at blockchain, deep in projects. There's all this idle capacity and all this demand. How can we connect that without having to hire thousands of employees? Like, some of my competitors have raised, you know, $680 million, billion dollars, 4,000 people, middlemen in transactions. And so we know there's a problem and, it, and it's accelerating. And we also know manufacturing is the core of money. If we don't make stuff, there's no stuff, there's no money, there's no banks, there's no Wall Street, there's no crypto, right? Manufacturing is the foundation of money. So here's some of our competitors. Um, you know, you've got like Proto Labs, Alibaba, you know, these guys, they spend um, you know, $10 to click on Google Ads, $200 is the cost of acquisition. Some are in 22 countries, some are in just US, Japan, and um, it's a very expensive process, right? And if you look at 3D printing alone, it's, it's over a $100 billion market. And the 3D printers are getting better and better and better. Like a, a $200,000 printer from like 10, 15 years ago, now is like $600. So we've got, we've got people that have like 100 of these printers, 1,000 of these printers, and they're doing uh, low volume production. So we believe that you know, on one side of the spectrum, you have centralized, like Alibaba, right? The knee-jerk reaction is, I got to go to China to buy my stuff for Amazon. Um, but we believe that there has to exist something on the other side of the spectrum, right? So while Alibaba is very centralized, we're looking at having something very decentralized. There's all this capacity. Think of Uber for manufacturing. All this capacity existing. And these people struggle. They buy hundreds of millions of dollars of equipment. They then have to use Google Ads to broadcast capacity. I was like, why can't this work like Bitcoin mining? You have machines that can broadcast our capacity, and we can, write, we can route you know, parts to that. So imagine uploading an iPhone case and selling it globally instantly. And if it's not purchased, it's not made. No customs, taxes, tolls. So it works very simply. Um, you upload a design. Um, just like Uber, in a few seconds, we know all those high-performing manufacturing nodes. And you can basically uh, send it to the printer. The person with the printer can actually make money. And then this is one of the most important parts. You know it's authentic, because you can track the provenance of the part. So if it's a Kawasaki part, Honda part, you know on the blockchain it goes straight from that manufacturer. The manufacturer feels comfortable. Um, you know, we've got com companies like BMW, John Deere, NASA. They're, they're building parts internally, and they're wanting in the future, not to hold this inventory, right? Digital inventory and immediately be able to send it anywhere in the world. So our network's real. You know, we've done like four million parts. Um, we start with localized networks, um, and we've proven this through all the top universities and companies. And now we're building this decentralized version. Um, and um, I'll, I'll show you a demo and how that works in a second. So here's a real part. Um, this is a Kawasaki part. Um, there was a ship in Africa. Norwegian Cruise Line, and they needed this part. Like, every hour that ship is idle, it's a problem, right? In, in the military, they have to use F-16s to fly these parts out. That's very expensive. So you can start to see that even the drone wars, right? All those uh, drones in Ukraine are being 3D printed. They're being designed in the US, and then they're, they're being sent overseas. So here's a part. Uh, you can see this was a... Um, uh, it was printed on an HP printer. All the information about the printer, the type of material, uh, you know, when it started to be manufactured, when it was completed, including the tracking code, everything's on chain. So now the manufacturers feel comfortable because 
they know that all parts can be copied, but they want to get royalties, right? And so since we're basically the, the, the source of the origination of the part, they feel comfortable. The people getting the part also want original parts too. You know, people don't know this. Over 10% of parts on airplanes now are entering a supply chain that are fake parts. Let's, let's say they're not qualified, certified. So how do we beat the incumbent? Speed, right? Uh, USDC, I can, I can transfer money around the world in seconds. I don't need, I don't need 1,000 or 10,000 people working in a bank, right? So not only can we send the money, we can send the parts globally in seconds. Efficiency, so like I said, my competitors have two, 3,000 people. So we did, I'll give you an example, Zetwork, uh, startup, Sequoia Box, you know, we're, we're a Silicon Valley company. They raised $680 million. It's a web form, you upload a part, they get it made. 3,000 employees. I've got 10 engineers and one salesperson, and we did 4 million parts, right? So the efficiency is very important, not only with the blockchain, but the automation, the smart contract can automatically write route, right? You can put the rules into the smart contract. So here's an order. I need 100 pieces. Here's the zip code. Here are the high-performing nodes that have certain SLAs. I've seen, the, I've seen that they've been able to produce parts on time to quality. I can immediately route that. Just like Bitcoin mining, right? You can route part, you can route um, to, to nodes that are high-performing, or you, you, you have to be part of a pool. And authenticity, we talked about that, right? I know it's an authentic part. I can go track that um, track that all the way back to the manufacturer. It's on their website. It's immutable. So, um, you know, we've got a pretty big vision. We're starting with 3D printing because we've been doing that for over a decade. We're, you know, number one for 3D printing operating systems. It's called 3D Printer OS, our Web2 company. But just like Amazon started with books, we want to add all types of manufacturing. CNC, water jet, you name it. And so the goal is um, start with 3D printing, which is a pretty big business, right? We did like a million parts last year, four million parts in the last few years. And if you can average, if you can average the order, those orders are between $10 to $100 minimum, right? So you can understand the kind of revenue. But ultimately, we want to do everything, right? There's no reason why we always got to go to China, why we always have to go to the Yellow Pages. And this is a big problem, not just for you and me that want to take products to market. This is a big problem for lots of companies like Lucid, they came up to us, Rivian, they're like, hey, John, when we have a problem, like, we have to like, start looking for new suppliers. It takes weeks, months, contracts. Where do all the ABC CNCs exist in the world? How can I find them in split seconds? So our goal is to index all that capacity. Now, it also helps the manufacturers that bought that equipment. These guys have loans. They have a SpaceX contract. All of a sudden, it's over. The guy wants to kill himself. He's got $200 million of CNCs. And no one knows where they are. So. Um, yeah, it's, it's a $100, $105 billion market opportunity, just 3D printing alone, right? People are buying this stuff, sitting idle, and it's over a trillion dollar market for just on-demand manufacturing. Of course, manufacturing total is 15 trillion. So it's a big, big market making real stuff that we all need, and I think this is the future of where blockchain is going. Like, we just can't be like creating these Ponzi schemes and, you know, rug pulls, and you have to make real stuff, right? So uh, here's a quick video, a little commercial video we did, and then uh, we'll do a demo after this one. You guys got the video? Click it again. Oh, yeah. The $12 trillion manufacturing market is in trouble. Supply chains are stuck. There's an over-reliance on offshore manufacturing. We are exposed to raw material shortages, rising shipping costs, and logistical breakdowns. And manufacturing is too costly, so only the big players can seriously compete. But what if you could manufacture products on demand, in real time, wherever they were needed in the world? No inventories, no supply chain. If it's not purchased, it's not made. With one click, the item would appear at its target location, like it had teleported directly from the designer's mind. All of a sudden, control of the $12 trillion manufacturing market would shift to designers, and current supply chains could disappear. 3DOS hopes to be the world's largest decentralized manufacturing network built on blockchain technology. And we have the vision and experience to achieve just that. Over eight years ago, I co-founded the world's first operating system for 3D printers. Today, 3D Printer OS runs on over 60,000 printers in 120 countries. 
making it one of the largest networks of 3D printers in the world. Over 200,000 designers at the most prestigious international organizations use 3D Printer OS, including MIT, Harvard, Google, John Deere, NASA, and the US Navy. I realized that by combining 3D Printer OS with blockchain technology, it would be possible to decentralize manufacturing, and that's 3DOS. Here's how it works. Designers upload their designs to the 3DOS system. 3DOS mints that design as an NFT, giving the designer ownership of that design and royalties for life. People around the world go to the 3DOS site and hit print. The design gets sent to a local 3D printing partner for collection or fast shipping. 3DOS earns a transaction fee on each purchase, and designers make money on each sale with zero risk. That's because there's no inventory to hold, and owners of 3D printers turn idle assets into money printing machines. It could be a new design or existing products. 3DOS is already working closely with advisors from global suppliers like Stanley Black & Decker and GCAN to achieve our potentially world-changing vision. And by 2025, we aim to have customers ordering products using the 3DOS network because decentralization is key to the 3DOS vision. We want anyone to have a chance to benefit from this potential shift in manufacturing. All right. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick, quick, I'm gonna show you guys a quick demo. This, this is actually, demo's a little bit old. It's, uh, we've progressed even before this, but um, let's see here. Can we start this demo? All right, so it's really simple. Um, all you need to do is log in, and um, here's the network of printers. I think we have like 1.8 million users now, so it's evolved since then, but you see all these, these are our manufacturing nodes. These are people that have machines that want to share. Just like think of Uber, you got idle capacity. You can see the material types. You can see, you know, um, you know, what kind of machines there are. You can also search designs. Let's say you know nothing about 3D printing. You just want to go window shopping and make something. You can just go in and here's another thing. When you log in, automatically creates a wallet in split seconds. So you don't have to know anything about creating wallets, right? Just log in, find something you want to print, it's automatically don't download from the internet, or you can find on the internet anything you want. So in this case, it's a whistle. It's going to model it within split seconds, so you can see exactly how it's going to be printed. And then you uh, click print, and it's going to live camera view into a machine. So this is all live. There's like low latency, right? So it's connecting to the machine. It's pulling the telemetry. You can see the video. video uh, this is all the videos of all the machines. So we have something called proof of print. Like we know that's been printed not only from the telemetry for the machines, but uh, pretty much all the data coming off the machines. And um, we have this new feature where people didn't know how to price their, um, their parts, so now you can see, this, you know, it's recommending you, you, you charge $23 for this octopus iPad stand. Um, and you know, this costs like 50 cents to make, so I can mess this up like a lot of times and still make a lot of money, right? So because it's, you're taking raw material, filament, or material, and you're basically creating a part, right? So there's no returns. So, um, so here's kind of like the view for the person that has a 3D printer. It has all their prints. There's a point system, so you're getting rewards, you're getting revenue uh, from making these parts. Um, everything is logged. Like I said, there's proof of print. Now, each of those has a fingerprint. Even if I print that like a million times, it has a unique fingerprint. They, it always has a unique fingerprint. So there's another way we can verify that it's an original print. Um, and here, it's on the blockchain. We're on the SWE network. Uh, they're friends of ours in Silicon Valley. We like their platform. Their team's amazing. Um, everything is logged, so you have all the data. We have AI that can do print fail detection. So this is something we've done for 10 years. So this is an example of a print that failed. The printer thinks it's working. But our, our, our Vision AI can see that you know, it's actually a failed print. You know, it looks like it's going correct, right? The machine thinks it's creating the part correctly. And then um, you can see there's a failure. And this happens. This happens maybe like 1% of the time, maybe less, depending on the machine. So yeah, you can basically select parts um, and get them routed. And we have a marketplace that's coming out uh, very soon. And that's just a quick overview and you know, we're kind of ahead of schedule. We already have uh, yeah, 1.5, 1.8 million users now. 
And um, you know, what we want to do is really prepare this for um, military, uh, the Bosches of the world. There's critical parts that they need around the world, small parts, and it's, the value is higher than the actual part value, right? Like I said, they have to fly F-16s to get these parts around sometimes. So um, that's a quick overview of, of 3D OS. Um, we have a lot of customers from our Web2 clients that are super excited because like, these guys are making parts internally, right? Um, and, and as you see the, the technology evolving, if you're into race cars or Porsches, you, you start to see like, the brake calipers on a Bugatti Veyron, they're 3D printed, right? So they're, they're looking at not only are we printing internally, and they're kind of using us as a guinea pig, right? You know, enterprises didn't get into Bitcoin and, and crypto until they see it's really proven. So in the, in the, in the beginning stage, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to do like NFT projects, uh, toys. Um, a lot of people are creating home businesses. I've got a kid making 20 grand a month selling dragons online. Other ones doing Black & Decker attachments. And these are people that don't have the money to go buy a bunch of inventory in China, put it into, you know, put it into storage, and then sell it. And if it doesn't work, you're out, right? So um, very excited about our partners, and they're very excited about what we're doing. And um, that's, that's 3DOS. Um, you know, ultimately, we're going to build the Alibaba decentralized. Like I said, we start with 3D printing, and we move up to all those other manufacturing capacity where designer rights matter and localized manufacturing eliminates supply chain bottlenecks. So thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, send me an email or find me afterwards and happy to talk to you. Thank you.